Welcome, Namaste and welcome to Dr. Shah's clinic in yet another video we are going to discuss on abnormal sperm shape and pregnancy. So an individual is said to suffer from a condition called teratozoospermia. If the number of normal appearing spermatozoa as seen under a microscopic examination falls under the 3% cutoff value. And this 3% value is as per the reference ranges given in the WHO and Roger laboratory guideline values. So the question arises, what is a normal appearing sperm? Now a normal appearing sperm, you know, if you look at the image on the right, is basically a sperm where the head is oval in shape, the head length will be around 4 to you know, 5.5 5 micrometers in length, the midpiece will be reasonably rectangular, it will have a central incision in the head and the tail will be you know, about 45 to 50 microns in length. The, the, the midpiece is also around, it's roughly the length of the midpiece will be equivalent to you know, the length of the head. And the head will have, will be covered by an acrosome, which is another structure, you know, which about 40 to you know, so 70 percent of the head is usually covered by an acrosomal cap. So this is how a typically you know a normal appearing sperm cell looks under a microscope. And you know, when we do a semen analysis, we need three percent of cells. You know, if, if we count, we count roughly around 400 sperms. So when we count about 400 sperms, we need three percent of you know our estimated counts to have. Um, a normal you know appearing shape as you see as you see in the figure on the right now let's look at the different types of you know uh, sperm morphological abnormalities or uh, sperm uh, sperm defects you know so there are different types of sperm abnormalities you know sperm shape abnormalities and you know we see sperms you know which have a large head you know as, as you can see in the image on the right some sperms will have a large head then the, some sperms will have a small head some sperms will not even have a head and this is called this is what what we call as a pinhead sperm to zoa that means there's no head at all um, in some sperm as well, they will double heads will be seen. In some sperms, you know, we can, we see midpiece defects. You know, large insertion of the midpiece or midpiece which is very large. And then sometimes we see sperm as well with double tails or you know, extremely long, very very long tails. So there are different types of defects. So there are head defects, there's midpiece defects, and there are tail defects and multiple defects. If there are one or two of these defects, you know, as you see under the sperm morphological exam, what's very important to understand is regardless of all the defects. If there are 3% normal sperms, the chances of pregnancy in the first year of marriage is usually quite good. Of course, remember, it's not the sperm morphology alone that's important. There should be normal appearing sperms, the sperm should have 32% motility and the count should be about 15 million per ml. So what we actually need is basically 15 million per ml in 1, 1.5 ml of semen, 32% moving sperms and about 3% should be normal appearing. So, that's the cutoff values which the WHO 2010 androgy laboratory guideline values prescribes. Now where did this co concept of you know normal appearing sperm actually come into picture? Now there were early studies you know which were done on you know what's called as IVF cycles you know in the, in, in the past the IVF was a technology which was used where you know the eggs and sperms were you know co-incubated with one another and you know the eggs the, the sperm used to swim to the egg and you know bind to the egg and then penetrate to the egg. Now in early studies of IVF what the researchers had actually found was that it was these only only these normal appearing sperms that were actually capable of you know binding to the egg as well as penetrating the egg. So the sperms that had you know abnormal sperm shapes you know like a very large head or double heads were not technically capable of binding to, binding to the egg. So basically the female egg selects the most normal appearing sperm you know in natural fertilization or in fertilization that occurs inside the female reproductive system. So there is something some mechanism some mechanisms that are going on there which we really do not understand. All we do know is that the normal appearing sperm is what basically binds to the egg. So in individuals if we get a semen analysis report where you know the report shows zero percent normal forms or you know in some dif in some cases we get abnormal very very uh, you know uh, abnormal uh, sperm morphology defects like globozoospermia right so globozoospermia is a condition where the acrosome is basically absent you know only the head is there now without the acrosome they the sperm cannot bind to that these are all true causes of sperm morphological problems leading to infertility and these patients have to be you know kind of managed with ICSI which is nothing but taking you know uh, the, uh, uh, taking healthy motile normal sperm and injecting it into the egg. So that's only for severe morphological defects like 0% normal forms as well as globus spermia. All other uh, defects you know if there's about 1% sperm you know if there's about 1% normal form or 2% normal form what we can do is you know treat the patient with active lifestyle intervention and medical therapy and to some extent we can improve the number of normal appearing sperms in the semen. So 
the idea of doing a sperm morphological exam or you know a sperm morphology assessment is purely purely only to ultimately detect whether the patient is actually suffering from severe morphological problems like globosuspermia or pinheads you know in pinheads what basically happens is there's only the tail the, the man is producing sperm but he's producing sperms without a head portion there are only tails so in globosuspermia pinheads as well as you know severe morphological abnormalities where you know there are large head defects like 95% 80% all abnormal heads are seen in these cases you know this is where we have to actively intervene with ICSI as a treatment modality otherwise most other morphological issues can be improved to a certain extent with healthy lifestyle habits exercise as well as medical therapy another important point to bear in mind with respect to sperm morphology is that just because you get one report showing sperm morphology as abnormal does not mean that you are producing abnormal sperms you have to repeat it with two three labs different labs with different periods of ejaculatory abstinence and what we have seen is you know with shorter ejaculatory abstinence you tend to get a report that seems to be more normal so that's something which we have you know systematically investigated and researched i'm linking to our research paper down in the uh, description have a look at the paper and what we have seen is with short abstinence period where you know less than one day there's a gap the abstinence is basically the gap between sexual intercourse and the time you're giving your semen sample if it's less than one day abstinence we tend to note sperm protozoa that are that have higher counts higher with better uh, better motility characteristics including better morphological characteristics so that's something we always have to bear in mind so just because you get one report that shows less than three percent of normal forms it does not mean you're infertile so please don't take that to your head recheck it with a different day, a different period of abstinence maybe you had a very long abstinence period because of that the morphological issues are there shorten the abstinence recheck your semen analysis in a different laboratory it also depends on the lab that's actually scoring your uh, particular semen sample we follow what's called as the Kruger's strict criteria or the Tigerberg's criteria for scoring uh, morphological problems you know under the microscope and that's very important please check with the lab that you're giving your sperm test if they're following the Kruger's strict criteria and the WHO 2010 for sperm morphological scoring today it's very sad to note that a large number of labs are still not following the latest WHO 2010 manual guidelines when doing a sperm morphology assessment so i hope you uh, you enjoy this i uh, enjoy watching this video on sperm morphology and abnormal morphology and pregnancy do comment like and subscribe and share this video with all your friends friends and loved ones this is dr shah vanakam i'll see you soon with anthony